Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to this video. So if you come into this and you don't know who I am, just to fill you in, I've been a Space Studios content creator for probably about the last three years now, and I'm really passionate about the game as much as you are who are watching this. So following the recent Q&A by Keen Software House, where it upset a bit of the community because we may have not gotten as much transparency as we asked for, I reached out to Marek Rosa, the CEO of Keen Software House and the main man behind Space Engineers, to ask him for an interview. Luckily for me, he accepted and we actually sat down and talked about the game for quite a bit. Now, it's all recorded and there's also a transcript available on Mark Rose's blog post, which will be available down below in the description, along with a few other resources for yourself. I definitely urge you to go and read the blog post as well as listen to this interview. I know it's a bit long, but if you are keen to hear answers about Space's development, the game direction, female engineers and ladders, definitely give this a listen. For my questions for this interview, I tried to pick out as many of the hard-hitting community ones as I could find over the course of the last week, some from Reddit, some from the comments section of the Q&A video, and some from my own personal community. Hopefully I've tried to ask all of the community questions I could possibly find, or specifically the ones that are hard-hitting the most, ranging from female engineers to ladders and even game direction. We also got some hints to what the next update of Space is going to be, so make sure to give this interview a good listen so you can actually hear it. I do hope you enjoy this. But let's get into Mark Rosa introducing himself and telling us a bit about who and what he is for those who may have not known. Okay, so starting this interview off, for those who don't know, my name is Jack, aka Captain Jack. I am a Space Series content creator for the last three years. And so I'll be interviewing Mark Rosa. Would you like to introduce yourself? So my name is Marek Rosa. I'm CEO and founder of Keen Software House, where we are developing space engineers and medieval engineers. I'm also CEO of Good AI, where we are developing general AI. And my role in space engineers is that I created it together with my colleagues uh, about five years ago. And before that, we worked on a minor wars. And so my role in regard to space engineers is that I'm a creative director and CEO. And, uh, and before that, I was a programmer. Yeah. Starting off, how well would you say the, the most recent update did, which is a major graphics overhaul? How happy were you with that one? Uh, very much, actually. I, I really like how we polished the visuals, and uh, I like the trailer that Joel made. And uh, there, there will still be some uh, follow-up visual work, you know, to make things look good or as we want, even in some edge cases or some angles and so on that we were not able to fully... Uh, fully polish uh, within the deadline that we put uh, on ourselves. And uh, there are some people that were unhappy with the changes or some mods that were not compatible with this new setting. So this led to some people being unhappy. But I think these are the things that are part of the early access development process. And uh, it's not making me happy. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm, I feel you know, that these people uh, are are unhappy with something or something is bothering them and so on. But as I said, like it's part of the process. And in overall, I think it was a very good update. Okay, brilliant. Because I know a lot of people did enjoy the trailers and it, now the game does look a lot better. I think a lot of people are definitely happy with it. Thank you. So following on from the update, do you see that 2018 is going to be a big year for development of Space Engineers? Yeah, yeah. I think it will be big, maybe the biggest. And... Uh, because we will do some major things. And again, like, you know, we have these surprises and stuff. So uh, I think it will be a major year. So following on from a previous Q&A, which we did a couple of weeks ago, there's been quite a few comments concerned that there will never be any new features for space engineers. Would you like to be able to put the community's concerns to rest on this? Yeah, so so here is something. And, and Jake, uh, you, can, uh, you can ask me again, you know, if something is not clear and so on, I can iterate on this. Uh, so the thing here is that uh, now we are working on this version of Space Engineers and we really want to finish it, you know, get it to a solid state where things are just working as they should be working. And uh, if we keep adding features, you know, we will never finish this version of the game. So, uh, of course, there will be new features, new blocks and new things in a future Space Engineers versions. But in this particular one, I wouldn't expect any dramatic uh, changes. There will be some, and again, they are in this surprise category, but uh, I think there are many things that will come, but in the future versions of Space Engineers genre. 
and again, we can really stop at this topic and talk about it from different angles because I think that some people in the community don't see it exactly as we see it here. And uh, we're actually discussing about this quite a lot with our colleagues, like what are expectations of these people. And so maybe you can help me uh, understand it better. Definitely. So I think... Um... Obviously, when you talk about the major or the phase space is in now, it's definitely in like a heavy optimization phase and just squashing a lot of bugs as possible. I don't think a lot of people realize, um, I think the way it came across the actual blog post you put across and then the QA, it kind of sounded like space is being pushed to a full release and there's never going to be like a new feature after that. So I think that's where the concern from the community did in fact came from. Yeah, yeah. So I think there will be new features after that. But again, uh, it's about expectations. And I don't want to 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 cause any kind of misunderstanding, miscommunication, because if there is a product, you know, it has certain end and then maybe next products, next iteration and so on. So uh, I also want to make it very clear that, of course, at some point in the future, uh, if there will be new version of Space Engineers, you know, uh, we will not be updating this one, you know, because there will be a new one. And I think it's like logical uh, development of things. There is nothing wrong about this. But I also have a feeling that some people in the community may feel strange about this or may not agree with this. And uh, I don't understand it. So again, uh, maybe you can help me to better understand them. Okay, so when you say new version of Space Engineers there, are we talking about a completely new game, so Space Engineers 2, or are we just talking about the next major update? Okay, uh, about a new game. So when you say a new version of Space Engineers, are we talking about the current game moving to the next major release, or are we talking a complete different version of the game, specifically so like a separate game from this one uh the second one so a completely new separate game you know that of course is building on top of space engineers one but i would consider it a new product and uh the reasons uh why it should be a new product and not still the same thing is that if we keep developing just one game forever then we will be also causing incompatibilities and breaking you know one game and uh, this will be against our vision of having space engineers in a really solid stage and s keeping it in that solid stage so we really need to get in a situation where there are some there is a major version of the or where there is a, a game release and this game release stays uh solid and then we can start doing the experimental and new stuff in a different branch basically Okay, I think this is where a lot of the community concern comes from, because when we do hear about a new addition or something later along down the road, people are concerned the time and effort and money that has been spent on the current game, which is Space Engineers, is going to go to waste, essentially. And although that may not appear as what's going to happen, that is where a lot of concerns coming from. But one day, Keen is just going to look at Spaces and think, well, we're done with that. It may still be quite buggy, but let's work on the next thing now. Uh, but we don't want to leave it buggy you know or, or unfinished like uh what i'm quite sure is that uh we will say that it's final version and it's released only when i will feel it's really uh optimized multiplier is working it's fast it's polished and there are all the features that we wanted and uh, of course we may have different opinion or people may have different opinion on what should have been the scope of this game or if it is missing or not missing some some uh, features. But again, I think people will have these expectations every time and uh, and we cannot really do anything about this. So uh, it's not like, uh, you know, like if some people have the impression that we are trying to just quickly push it up and, you know, like so we can focus on something else. So this is something which is absolutely not true. Like we are, of course, uh, pushing things and trying to get it out, but in a very good state you know that's the point like actually this is what we are doing last two years so uh i would like to really uh put people's minds at rest at ease and just assure them that uh the long-term future of space engineers is looking great now we are talking about this near term about this particular product we want to get it to a really solid state that's our main focus not adding new features but getting it to solid state and uh, yeah, so if you have some follow-up questions, please. 
So when Space Engineers is at the solid state as you talk about, whether that be this year or the start of next year, will we continue to see new features for Space Engineers after the solid state? So um, even just, well, you know, just general features that could be added to the game. Or will we continue to see them? Uh, this is in the category of the surprises, you know. Mm-hmm. So I take that as probably a yes, then we will eventually see something after the solid state of Space Engineers. Yeah, let's see the surprise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, going on to the next question here, one of the biggest sort of community talked about features for space engineers that has been highly asked since the last Q&A is the possibility of a female engineer being added as well as deeper character customization. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Again, this is one of the things uh, I don't want to ruin any surprises. So so definitely from taking your answer there, there is a possibility of something being worked on, but we don't want to talk about it just yet. Exactly. So I think that possibly will put the community at rest because I think the Q&A stream uh, came across as just like a flat no and people kind of left like, oh, we've asked this so long. Is it just going to be a no and no expansion on that? So I think you just saying there that it's a surprise, possibly hinting towards something maybe produced down the line. You know how it goes with surprises. It's like if you press too much, you know, then surprises are not surprises anymore, which I think we are already in that in that zone, actually. So, of course. So uh, this is there is some unfortunate timing, you know, for some questions. I would say. Mm. I think we just uh, wait and see what we until we get in a future surprise. In that case. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Moving on. Uh, could we possibly see a new roadmap for Space Engineers this year, um, seeing as it's well requested by the community? So this is, as I said, uh, one of the things where we need to keep flexibility, you know, and surprises, and mm, so we don't want to do a roadmap for space engineers for the sake of keeping things like um in general surprise so we don't want to spoil things essentially yeah, exactly. that's why it would be a roadmap that's the thing and like we have very specific plans for this year and for uh, the other year and years but uh you know keep the surprise as a surprise and also keep the flexibility and uh Fair enough. Would you not suggest sometimes it might be better to share some things with the community so they do know they are getting certain things and keep the bigger stuff as a surprise or the highly experimental stuff as surprises? So if it doesn't happen, then we've not talked about it, essentially. Yeah. yeah. There is, for example, one thing, uh, optimizations and multiplier and polishing. And uh, I'm basically open to talk about this because it does need to be a surprise. And, uh, and it's also work that is being done currently. So, of course, this is a bigger topic, but uh, after the last update, uh, the visual update, uh, we continued working on optimizations and uh, multiplayer stuff. And uh, this is our current major focus. So, I think that. I think it's something that has been well needed for Space Engineers for a while, and I think a lot of the community are going to be glad to hear that, um, definitely with multiplayer, because it's one of the biggest features of Space Engineers is the multiplayer, and people enjoy playing on dedicated servers, so hearing the fact hopefully optimization is going to come to the game is going to be reassuring for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are working on this, and we have some good progress. And so, for example, what we are doing now is that uh, a couple times per week, uh, we play Space Engineers here internally, and many people, uh, or entire team, joins the server, plays, try to break things, you know, do some crazy stuff in creative mode, and basically push the limits of what the game can do with certain amount of players. And then we profile this this thing, so we we see uh, which parts of the system uh, of the game are taking how much performance, you know, like either CPU or memory. And then uh, the programmers, they focus on these particular things and optimize them. And like during the last couple of weeks, we have been optimizing one thing after another. So there has been a good progress on some uh, stress test kind of uh, maps. And there will be even more. So uh, I think I think people will get what they want from the multiplier. Brilliant to hear. I think definitely the sound of like internal Q&A going on at that scale as well is going to put a lot of people's minds to rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there actually is even uh, improvement in the QA process. Like when we were in the early access pro, pro, uh, in the access phase, I mean this is weekly, 
uh, weekly releases uh, phase, uh, it was impossible, of course, to test the whole game every week, you know, because it takes three, three weeks at least to test uh, everything in the game. And you can, cannot do this every week. I mean, maybe yes, if you do things in parallel, but again, that would be just like super hard to manage. So uh, uh, we are never testing the whole game be before the release, any of these minor releases or weekly releases. And this also was putting us to risk, you know, that we release something, we break something, and, and we also felt unhappy about this because we knew that some percentage of people will get some bugs, some problem, and it's just not good. So uh, as we are nearing this, uh, another major release, and as we are near nearing the release of the game, uh, we are working on uh, better QA processes or like the final QA processes and to make sure that we have 8,000 use cases and the testers can test one thing after another. So basically after they test it all, we will know how many test cases passed or failed and based on this we can release or not release. So, so for me actually this will be very good new improvement because uh, I will have much more uh, confidence about the stuff that we are releasing, you know, because as I said, like when we when we were doing weekly releases, we tested a lot, of course, but I was still unsure because I knew that there are huge areas that were not tested during that week. Like I knew it, and I have one rule that from one friend, and he always told me that unless you test it, you must assume that it's broken. And so, uh, you know, like you are releasing something and you know that you didn't test this, so it's probably broken. Or if it is not broken, it's kind of like just a coincidence. You know, it's not because you did it, but it's because coincidence. So I was unhappy. But with, with this new QA process, this more major release, uh, long-term focus QA process, I will have also better confidence that when it goes through the QA, it's really solid. So do you think moving from the weekly updates to now the bigger updates has definitely helped Space News become more refined, particularly where you can test larger parts of the game, if not the whole game now? Do you think it's definitely helped the game a lot? Yeah, yeah, I think it helped and it's also going to help in the future. Like it was it was really good in the beginning, let's say first two years, to be doing these weekly updates because the team was super small, uh, the game was much simpler. Uh, also, the expectations of people about how polished the things should be was different. You know, people were happy that they have space engineers and they didn't really care if something looks a little bit ugly or not. They were just happy that they can actually build this, this stuff. And But as time went, uh, their expectations changed. They want either more stuff or more polished stuff or less buggy stuff. And we need to adapt to this. And one way how to adapt to this is to, uh, to do to do it like the other companies, you know, that you don't have a, uh, a release of a new car or update to your cow car every week, you know, like that would be crazy basically if, you know, your car would update every week or other things like operating system or, or I don't know, like, you know, this thing. So uh, there really needs to be some more, um, less frequent and more, more uh, mature and more well-tested process. And I'm really like personally really looking forward to this because I really want to be releasing stuff that I'm confident with. Brilliant to hear. Um, yeah, I can see like the development cycle of space has definitely improved since the last couple of years, which is good to hear because I think that's going to put community concerns to rest a little bit just because how the game's being developed now and much more, like you say, a much more professional standard. So moving on to the next question here, one of the most requested features over the last couple of years and probably since they were removed has been ladders. The community have heard you mention that you're not sure why people want them in the game. Have you had any more time to think about this subject and would you possibly consider adding them in the future? Uh, yes, yes. So the only reason we are not adding uh, ladders anytime soon is that uh, we have different priorities. You know? And again, there are really these priorities. And... Uh, I actually personally would love to add it. And I was the guy actually who added them to the game five years ago. You know, like it was my idea to have ladders in the game. And uh, the main reason actually was that, uh, like there is one thing, I, I don't know if people understand this or not, but one part of my vision for Space Engineers is that you as player should feel that you are in that world and you are actually interacting with that world. So for example, uh, if we had more time, for example, I would like to not have any GUI in the game. It would be all like in-game controls, you know, like like 3D controls in the actual game. Nothing in like two-dimensional GUI, but everything in-game. Because that's 
uh, that's immersive and then you feel that you are really in this world and this 2D GUI is not breaking this immersion for you. But that's again, this is long-term vision or long-term idea. And, and uh, I wanted letters because I think that when you see your hands, uh, like touching the these leather sticks, you know, like these leather things as you are climbing up or down, I think it makes you perceive the game and you being in the game, this immersion effect even more. So this was the reason why. But unfortunately, there are very many uh, edge cases, uh, especially due to physics and the complicated physics we have in space engineers and the multiplier and all these things that make it hard to deliver 100% polished and working, uh, not breakable ladders in the game. So because we have the other priorities, uh, this is the reason why we are not uh, going to add them to the game anytime soon. That's reassuring to hear, hear you say that because I think a lot of people took away from the Q&A that when you said, no, it's kind of like that we're never going to see them again. But now we just got confirmation that it is not a priority currently. Maybe we will see them at some point in the later stage of Space Engineers in, in the future. Yeah, again, but I would really like to, like to emphasize here that when we are talking about future of Space Engineers, it's really important to understand which future we are talking about. If we are talking about this particular product, you know, that is on Steam currently, or some next product, or some addition to the game, or, or whatever. Uh, those are the things that I would like to keep open. Like, in long-term future, I would want to have ladders in space engineers, because I think it's cool. It's just like, uh, and especially if it will be with VR and all these things, it's, it's perfect. Uh, it's just like, again, there are some priorities, and current priorities to optimize, and stabilize, and make it solid, and robust, and, you know, make it perfect. That's the priority. So for this single reason, the letters are second in these priorities, you know, and uh, because the resources or our hands are tight, we really need to focus only on the most important things. And then the less important things maybe we will do sometime in the in the long term future. Definitely. And hearing you say how keen prioritize things there is very important because as you explained before, you are a small team. So therefore, prioritizing certain features has to be taken very seriously because well, you are a small team, as you mentioned before. Would you like to expand on how you prioritize things a bit so the community may understand that? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, so how you prioritize things? Well, uh, there are many criteria that you can use to, to uh, basically measure if this task or that task is more important. So one of them is, uh, you know, if it is low effort, high impact. And low effort, I mean, uh, like small development time, small chance of causing some troubles, you know, like breaking things, uh, small chance of like misanalyzing something and uh, being overly optimistic and thinking that, okay, this is just some small feature, we'll do it in two days. And then in reality, it's two months of, of, of hell. Uh, so this is on the low effort side and on the high impact side, I would say something that will make happy many people or as, as many people as possible or something that is like a pain pill for many people, you know. So I would actually, right now we are focusing on this pain pill kind of solutions, not really like vitamins. You know, like there is this, this uh, example that some startup people are using that if your product is a pain pill, everyone will buy it. But if your product is like a vitamin, not everyone will buy it because you actually don't need vitamins that much, you know. But if something is hurting you, you will take the pain pill. Like you don't care about the money or nothing, you just take the pain pill. So uh, this is not like really good example maybe, but I was just like trying to show that there are things that uh, are must and there are things that are nice to have. And so right now we are focusing on things that are must, you know, like optimized, polished, a solid, solid game. Uh, so this is one way how to optimize things. And then, uh, because we are in this stage where we have so many must-have things, uh, I, f I would say this is the main criteria right now. For the future, it's a little bit more interesting because you can be a little bit more uh, like dreaming about the stuff. So uh, another like another criteria that we are using and we used in the past and we will use in the in the future for prioritizing thing is like 
how much we as authors, as creators, want to do that thing. Like how much passion we have for that thing. It's just like, you know, if you want to do something, then just, just, and you really want to do it, then just do it. So this is very important for us. Like I don't want to do things just only because people ask, ask me for it or because it will make money or something like this. I actually would want to, let's say, do some mix of, of this, but also I want to do things because I really want to do those things. You know, it's some kind of calling, some kind of passion. I don't want to just do it because someone is pushing me or only because there are money in it. So this is another criteria that I'll be using for, we will be using for prioritizing things. And for example, with space engineers, it was, there was nobody who would tell me or us, uh, guys, please make space engineers a game. Uh, it will be cool. I want to play it. You know, it was just our calling, our, our vision, our need to create this kind of game. So, uh, so this is important. And, uh, and then there are more technical things to consider. So for example, uh, how much is that thing related with this long-term vision of space engineers and how much our engine and our game is prepared for this thing? Because sometimes you can really add a lot of value for players and for the game by doing some simple changes. And sometimes, and, and they will get a lot of benefit from this. And sometimes you will spend months of redoing something, something super complex. And in the end, actually nobody cares. And even you personally don't care about that thing anymore. So that's another thing that we are using for uh, prioritizing. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we'll move to the next section now anyway. Um, building more on the previous Q&A stream, a lot of the community heard your response to the question of, and I quote, I'm afraid of SE going out of development without realizing its full potential. Your response to this question seemed to indicate version 2, which we have spoken about a moment ago. A lot of the community have become concerned that we're going to see a direct sequel to Space Engineers without this game being totally finished. Um, I've also quoted your original reply on the sheet as well. Okay, so uh, I think that when we release Space Engineers, it will be like more than its full potential, in my opinion. You know, like uh, there are already things in the game that are like about the scope of our original plan and dreams for Space Engineers. So I'm not worried about this. Uh, the only thing that we need to focus on right now to deliver it in a solid state, you know, that's the only thing. And then it will be more than, uh, uh, how is this word? Uh, utilizing its full potential, you know, at the moment. And then of course we can keep going, you know, like there can be space engineers too, there can be spin-off, there can be different, different engineering games, whatever. Again, we would like to keep this as a surprise. And, uh, and uh, I am expecting that there will still be some people who will think that the game didn't reach the full potential or because they had different expectations and so on. And uh, we can talk with them, try to explain, uh, you know, like our way of seeing this and, and we will try to do it. Actually, this is one of the reasons why we did the blog post last week and uh, the QA last week to start this process and i think it will take some time and it will need probably few iterations to get people on the same page with us and to really understand how we mean it and uh, but at least we started the process it, it was a little bit painful you know but uh, i think eventually we'll get there because there is a good will on both sides you know ours and also the community so i don't think why in the end we should not see it very in a very similar way uh, moving on the community from what i can see um are currently concerned there is no plan for space engineers and we may be getting close to a finished version so this builds back into the roadmap question as of earlier but i think you've covered this one by saying there are steps now in process to work on a cleaner version and a more polished version of space engineers um, would you like to elaborate on that anymore uh, just tell us a bit more about what's progressing throughout this year if you can without ruining any surprises Okay, so in principle, I think the basic formula that we are guiding ourselves right now is that everything that is currently in the game should be, uh, or I would say different, everything that is currently in the game and we don't consider it for some reason experimental feature uh, needs to be uh, solid and polished and bug-free in the final version of the game when we release it. So this is the 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 
recipe that we are using. So basically, we look on some feature or some mechanic, and if it is in a stage that we don't feel it's enough for the final version of the game, then we focus on it and work on it. And right now, it's uh, it's the multiplayer. And actually, one thing that is is helping us is when entire space team is focusing on one single objective. This actually really helps us because even me and uh, and Petr Minařík, the leader, and Chendo, the the Chenda Renda, you know, the engine uh, leader, and other guys, uh, their focus is not distracted by many things because when you are creating something and um, you need to be focusing on different projects, you need to be swapping between and switching between different projects, different shorter memories, b- different priorities. And it's it's really hard, actually. It's actually even for me hard to switch from space to medieval to good AI, you know, because it's like I feel how much I forgot f- since the last day, like specific details. So I need to read my notes again just to get it to my head and it's, it's really uh, time consuming so instead of just having one project in your head you know that's much better but again here we are uh, we have this project so again in space uh, basically everyone except some small things are focusing on optimizations and multiplier and actually what probably many people don't know or don't realize is that uh, what is missing in multiplayer is actually not better multiplayer, but just optimizing these edge cases or things that maybe people don't see as edge cases because, you know, for them, it's just like, okay, let's spawn 100 chips in the game, why it shouldn't work. But uh, unless something is optimized, you know, it's it's always an edge case for us. So, uh, so we are looking one edge case after another, optimizing it, of course, sometimes in more general, a more abstract way and uh, moving it forward. There has been good progress. Uh, the game is running like with every iteration faster and faster on client and also on server. And uh, so maybe what else to add? So I think recently um, with recent updates, multiplayer, we can't deny it, it definitely has improved since a couple of years ago when it really was unstable. So work clearly is being done on it. But we're now entering a rather big optimization phase for multiplayer, which is hopefully going to tidy it up completely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's our main focus. Like there is basically nothing else the the people are focusing on right now. There are some minor things, of course. Uh, for example, we are still tweaking some things in visual tweaks, uh, but uh, those are. Uh, like we design them as as less important things. So uh, let's talk a moment about the Xbox One version of Space Engineers. Um, how do you how well do you currently think the work is currently going on that version of the game? Right now, it's actually going very well. We have one team uh, that is like outside of the company. It's external team that is working on this, and from time of ta- time to time, there are some some guys from our team helping them with uh, this or that. And uh, I think these guys, they are doing it very well. And uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm actually happy with this. Uh, I, I wasn't really happy uh, some time ago when we were like hitting basically one dead end after another dead end. But, you know, because we are persistent, we found a way, we find the right team. And we especially found a good solution how to get out of these dead ends. So. Uh, we'll get there. And again, uh, the technical issue here is that uh, our game is in C sharp, and uh, uh, it may sound strange, but it's actually or it was hard to get it working on Xbox. You know, even though C sharp is Microsoft thing, uh, Xbox is Microsoft thing. It was hard to to make this working a few years ago. But things changed, especially on the Microsoft side, uh, and now it's it's easier and uh, it's progressing. And uh, and uh, I think it's it's going really well. Excellent. A few people have criticised the decision of Keen to come out of the Xbox One version, saying it's too early in the development of a PC game to commit to another version of a game. Would you have anything to build on that idea? I think it was okay. It was a business decision made together with Microsoft. You know, there are some things uh, related to this decision, and uh, I, I don't think uh, you know, like. Of course, people are impatient and people would want to have everything today and so on, but I don't think there is anything wrong about this. I think also people 
sometimes may not fully understand space engineers we've seen how it runs on a computer or a dedicated computer a console is quite a bit different from how a pc runs especially when it comes down to the bare bones of game development it's going to be quite hard to already take space engineers a highly experimental game over to a console which is not less powerful but is on a very different architecture almost yeah exactly is there anything more you can tell us about how development is progressing on the Xbox version of Space Engineers? Uh, no, it, I, I can just say that it's, it's really progressing well. And when there will be some major information, something that we can share with the community, we will do it. Excellent. So moving on to the next part, I think we can agree that the modern community for Space Engineers is extremely talented in what they've been able to do with the game. Are there any future plans to implement some of the best mods into the game? Yeah, so yeah, I agree. Uh, the modding community is extremely talented and and they're co-creating the game together with us. And uh, so I'm very, uh, very happy with this and very glad and very thankful. And uh, regarding implementing some of the best, best mods, again, I would keep it in the surprise category. You know, I think it's, it's very logical step actually to do. And uh, just we have some priorities right now we need to focus on the pain, you know, that the majority of the players have. And uh, so we need to stabilize, polish, and so on. And then there can be these possibilities. Excellent. I think my next question kind of builds into that same answer there, that a lot of the community have been asking for more decorative features to be implemented into space engineers, similar to what we have in medieval engineers. Would you kind of class that under the same idea of uh, what's, what is the priority at the minute, which is stabilizing space engineers before more features become added? Exactly, exactly. That's the thing. I think actually adding decorative features to, to space, similarly as medieval has it, is a great idea and uh, should be really low effort and low risk kind of thing, you know. So it's very logical step to do. But... You know, let's keep it for later once the main priority is finished. At the moment, the community are concerned that Space Engineers lacks direction to the end goal. Could you possibly share any more of us on the end vision you have of the game? And now we are talking about this particular version of Space or the long-term future versions? I think the long-term future version might be good. So maybe if we picture next year as well. Okay, that's interesting one. Like... The vision, long-term vision for space engineers always was about having uh, realistic physics so that it's intuitive for people, uh, be modular, you know, on the level of blocks and also mods and programmable blocks and all these things. So being people being able to modify and also enhance and upgrade and modify the game and add stuff, even like out of our own scope or like outside of our own scope so do things that we cannot do ourselves you know because also we cannot do everything so really be as modular and as dynamic as as upgradable as possible this is the long-term future so i i for example see space engineers as a game that you can be playing uh in single or multiplayer or in, in maybe in an mmo mode uh, with many players building stuff, trading, fighting, uh, engineering things, and uh, people engineering new parts of this universe, uh, even, as I said, like out of the scope of what we designed, you know, so some kind of multiverse, basically, you know, where people are creating their own worlds, and we are mainly focusing on providing them the core basis so that they can be doing this safely. This is my, my main reason. And then, of course, there are many things that can be like kind of spin-offs around. Uh, and again, I would like to keep the specific as a surprise, but I would really love to make a story-driven space engineer's game, you know? Maybe not as sandboxy as this one, because, you know, with story you need a little bit, little constraints, but I would really love to do it. So you speak there about the possibility of spaces in like a multiverse sort of scenario. It almost sounds similar to the uh, new dual universe game, which has been seen around a bit. Could you see um, elements sort of what that does in Space Engineers? Because Space Engineers has been compared to that quite a lot. And a few people are like, mm, it looks too similar almost. Uh, well, I don't know much about dual universe and especially not these things. But I've been actually talking about this idea of multiverse about three years ago, uh, 
even Joel remembers, right? Yeah. And uh, there are many ways how to do this. And one idea was that uh, imagine that you have multiple servers, and of course the servers could handle more players, but you can also travel seamlessly from server to server without actually like having the join screen and all these things. So we'll just like um, use use some teleport or, or uh, jump you know, from one location to another without realizing you are a different server managed by different admin uh, using different modes. And uh, you would be able to to bring objects, items, creations from one server to another server, you know, just like for you as a player, it will be just one multiverse. This is the idea. But again, uh, just to emphasize, this is the long-term vision for, for a space. Definitely. It sounds like a very interesting long-term vision. I'm sure people are going to be interested to hear about. But like you just say, just to emphasize, it is a long-term vision, which is not the immediate concern, at least for the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you mentioned spaciness has been in early access for about four to five years now, which we can agree is a lot of time. If the game were to leave early access, will the community still see work being done on the game, whether that be features, bug fixes, or just general maintenance? I think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just like, again, uh, to uh, to make sure that people's expectations are aligned with ours or with what we can deliver is that uh, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't expect that we would be working for 50 years on this particular product, you know, that's just not possible. So, like, I really want to make this clear, but some small work, uh, and again, let's keep this for surprises, uh, that's for sure. Of course. So the direction of space engineers, um, as we spoke about earlier, is regarded as a bit of a concern by the community at a minute. Would you be happy to say that you and your team know where the game is heading and what the game should look like in a finished state? Uh, yes, of course. Like, uh, I, I, I see some people saying, of course, these things, but there always has been clear vision for space engineers. And uh, I think... Uh, Sometimes some people have this feeling that there is no vision or no direction for space engineers is because they don't see the process or they don't understand the process or maybe we don't communicate well the process, but there always has been very clear vision for the game. And actually there has been even moments, and I can say this openly, where we kind of diverge from this vision, but get back. And one of them is the, the visual style for the game. Maybe not as important, for some players, but for me, very important that the game started with certain visual style that I really loved. I think it was super cool. And then uh, as we were developing and there are new people in the team, you know, and because we are also doing weekly updates, so we cannot get, we cannot steer the development like, uh, or, or uh, things change from week to week. And sometimes there is some momentum, you know, and it takes time until you steer the development back. So it took some, some time, but we steered the visual style towards the original style and towards the vision. And this basically like make the game look like it's from current era or next few decades. NASA technology, realistic, uh, vibrant uh, colors, good contrast, and uh, not that many colors on the screen, you know, so that uh, you can use the colors actually to better detect objects, better detect uh, better contrast background and uh, foreground objects uh, or things that player can interact with. So this was very important. Another uh, things where we keep the vision is actually focusing on uh, the building and having the character uh, as a means to do the creation. So for example, this is why I am. I don't want to add any special character stats or character customization in this particular version of Space Engineers. Like, I'm thinking about some, some ideas for long-term future, but not for now, because I think the game is about building stuff, engineering stuff, and not about managing st uh, some statistics of your character. You know, it's not RPG. And if we actually decide to do uh, something where there will be more focus on the actual character and customi customization or upgrading your character and so on, then I would really take this as a core feature of the game and we'll, I will find a way how to make it unique for Space Engineers. So not just a 
copy paste from another RPG game or some MMO game or where you have just some levels and your character is just leveling up, you know, for some I don't know what reason. But there will really be something connected to engineering. So maybe you engineering your your body, your character, you know, something like this. I can see for space engineers, but not just like let hit the tree five times and you have more level, you know, or something like that. I, I think that's not what space engineering is about. So we have this vision and we are also kind of protecting, defending uh, this vision. Excellent. So what you just mentioned there about character customization, I think a lot of the community may not understand or are concerned why the development team may not just want to add the mod for particularly the female engineer straight to the game when it, it could be seen by the community as a really simple add, but it may be a, be a bit difficult for development. Would you like to build on that anymore just to answer one of the community questions? Yeah, so, so as I was talking about the female... Uh, I don't want to spoil any surprises, you know, so it's hard, oh, of hard course. for me to, to talk about this. Uh, but in general, uh, it's uh, like from a technical standpoint, of course, adding uh, another character to the game is like more of an easy task, you know, there are not that many risks, so it's okay. Uh, so while we're here on this question a minute, a member of the community has asked where the best place to submit bug reports to you, yourself and the developers. Where would that be? Okay, so uh, our forums, you know, King Forum, and also our Discord, and uh, our email, which is support, support at kinswh.com. And in the future, we'll have a better ticketing system where they can submit the ticket, get the reply, you know, track the progress, and so on. And also, we'll have better information about how particular tasks uh, or tickets are progressing and so on. So, But right now, forum, discord, and support at kineswh.com. Excellent. I'll make sure to put those on screen just so everyone knows. Mm -hmm. um, if members of the community have more questions for yourself and the de development team, uh, where are the best place for them to be to ask those questions? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe we can do a follow-up interview. Maybe that's best, you know, because we cannot be addressing every every comment, every question that people have on social media. It's just like, you know, thousands of comments every day. And uh, so I think it's better to to grab, you know, the most important questions, uh, compress them and then address them in an interview or a blog post. And uh, so my recommendation here, for example, would be that Let's make another interview with you following weeks or months. Definitely. That sounds um, a good idea. So if people leave their comments, maybe on either your blog post when this goes live or the video, we can collect them in a month time or a couple of weeks and look back on those questions. Yes. yes. By the way, I almost forgot. Uh, we also have this uh, feedback site, you know, feedback at kineswh.com where people can submit uh, their suggestions, their wishes, and they can do voting and, and so on. And we already addressed many of them, I think more than 100 uh, submitted things from there to the game. And we also know that, for example, letters are like top in the list and the female is also top in the list. Excellent. I'll make sure to put that on screen just so everyone knows uh, where to go for that particular website. Moving on to the next question. Uh, a lot of questions from the community have been asked. I think we can agree that transparency is needed to a degree without spoiling surprises for space engineers. Would you yourself and some members of the development team be opening to do more Q&A streams or interviews with members of the community? Yeah, definitely. I think that's the best way because, uh, you know, we are, of course, biased in certain way. And we may think that people understand something in the exact way as we do and so on. So it's better to get someone who is a little bit out of the company and, and ask us the questions and really make sure that we explain until it's satisfying. So I, I would really suggest this. I think it's even better than me writing blog posts because, again, I'm some, somehow biased and I may not explain something well enough and so on. So I, I would recommend actually doing uh, QAs. I think definitely with outside Q&As, it definitely gives a more human approach and to yourself and not only Keen as well. It opens, them, opens yourself up to a lot more questions as well from the community. Yeah, yeah, sure. On a final note, could you give us any hints of what the next major update for Space Engineers might be? Any, any hints towards the next big surprise? Uh, well, if people listen to our discussion today, I think they got many hints. Definitely. Yeah. 
Okay, I think that is wrapping up here. Is there any final points you'd like to emphasize to end this on? Uh, yes, sure. There have been a few people asking something, you know, under your tweet. And so, uh, for example, Jim uh, uh he had one question. I, I would repeat the question and then I would provide my answer. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. So Jim Ackle is asking about... Uh, or he's saying that Torch contributors have not only debugged the problems, he's talking about replicables in multiplayer and uh, that they are performance consuming. So uh, he says that Torch contributors have not only debugged the problems, but have shared tangible solutions to the problem, which involve removing of full unoptimized code from the replication system. Are you or aware of that work? So the answer is that uh, yes, uh, we are, we know about these things. And I would also explain what are these replicables. So, it's a part of the game where uh, the system needs to send list of close objects to a player, you know, when he joins or some other situation. And the old way, you know, like this first iteration prototype way, how we implemented it some time ago, was that the game iterated over all players in a single loop and then collected the, the, the list of objects and sent it. Uh, what the modders uh, did, uh, there is a plugin uh, called Fast Replicables, and basically it parallelizes this loop into multiple parallel threads, which then run, you know, in parallel, which means like in the same time on multi-core systems. So uh, this particular thing is finished faster. And we have a new solution for this uh, during our multiplier optimization things, which goes a little bit even beyond this, uh, because it's preemptively selecting less objects, uh, iterate and so on. And uh, the reason why we can do a little bit more than the modders in this case is that uh, modders, they usually, because they are modifying the game, they can inject things here or there, but it's harder for them uh, to modify the flow of the data inside the game. And we can do this. You know. Of course, there is always a risk that with these changes, we break something for the modders, but we can do these bigger changes. And one of these bigger changes was actually focusing on having better uh, replicable uh, system. So uh, there, there is uh, there's this thing. And, and the reason why we didn't optimize it before or why it was in this prototype early version was that we had different priorities and we cannot be working on different parts of the game at the same moment. You know, we can focus on just one thing at the time, but we were aware of this. And the way we find these hotspots or, or bottlenecks is through profiler. You know, so we launch the server clients, we kind of try to stress this the game, and we watch the profile, which is a tool inside the game. And uh, the programmers have developed even like newer versions of this profiler for us. And uh, we, we are watching how much CPU and memory resources is each part of the game occupying or consuming, you know, and there are some hierarchies. So we can see, for example, that the render is taking this much physics, this much multiplier, this much, and then we can step inside and see which parts of the multiplier are taking how much and so on. And then we can find the most consu consuming things, optimize those, and then get, uh, you know, like, or get the low hanging fruits. So uh, this is, I think, the answer to, to Jim Ackle. And uh, we also, are thankful that they are doing this thing and we recognize their work and, and we are aware of not all of them, of course, but uh, many of these work. So even now, for example, it was very easy for me to discuss this with uh, Renda, Chenda and Philip, uh, like the particular details of this replicable. And uh, also following to this is uh, now, since uh, our guys are optimizing and focusing on multiplayer, it's best time for the modders uh, to get in touch with uh, Chendo, you know, his name is Jan Hloushek, and uh, give him feedback, do some code review. He's actually like really anticipating and waiting for people to get in touch with him. So uh, I think some people have contact on him, so it will be easy for them. Maybe if you want, we can provide a, a, fee, a, a contact in like his email, they can contact him. But now it's really the best time for people to give uh, giving feedback. And some people actually have access to our SVN so they can provide even very specific and detailed uh, feedback. So this was for Chimacle. 
And uh, then there was another question from Meow Captain. Before you start on that one there, just to emphasize on the previous point, definitely for modders to get into touch with you and your team now, or specifically that team member, we should probably leave a link to his details down below to emphasize modders to get into contact with yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I will send you uh, to email his email address to make sure, you know, you, we have it. Excellent. We'll make sure to note that down. Okay. And uh, now regarding the question from new captain, uh, so she's asking uh, about explanation as to why the features the community really wants, letters, female, uh, most customization, aerodynamics, more weapons. Uh, why are these features not planned? And uh, yeah, she's also asking that we should upload uh, this, this uh, interview to official space channel. So uh, we discussed letters, you know, it's about different priorities, although I would really love to add it. Uh, female, I don't want to ruin any surprises. Character customization, I also touched that one. So again, uh, right now the focus is on engineering. Uh, right now the focus of space engineers is on engineering. In the future, I would want to do some uh, character customization, but again, it needs to be something very unique. And aerodynamics, of course, this is a cool feature, but again, there are the priorities. And uh, some time ago with Joel, we were playing uh, a mod, you know, where there is this uh, this re-entry, and it's, it's really cool. But again, we have priorities, we cannot do everything. And more weapons, again, different priorities. But it would be cool, of course. Like, I think uh, Space Engineers actually deserve even, like, particular, and I'm talking about the long-term vision thing, uh, deserves just, like, weapons focused, uh, major update kind of thing, or major version, or addition, or, or whatever, you know, something which is focused just on weapons, because the engine is so modular and so easy to upgrade, and especially for weapons, like, I can see so many, and not just, like, bigger weapons or more powerful weapons, but different mechanics, uh, interesting mechanics, even weapons that work in some engineering way, you know, that you actually not just need to engineer the weapon, but actually you use the weapon in some engineering way and create some trap, you know. And this was one of the, uh, this was and is one of the vision of space engineers that people would be uh, playing the game. The engineering will be kind of on a background, you know, so it will be still there, but their objectives will be different, like fighting, for example, or trading and, and other things. But the physics and the engineering will be on the background and they will have different types of weapons and uh, they will be just like in the real world, you know, you can do like all these interesting things and they work because this world is somehow modular and so it should be the same in space engineers. I think it's quite surprising what the community have already developed in terms of customizable weapons and such using engineering features. We've seen things like rail guns and um, coil cannons and stuff like that, where they're actually projecting blocks and firing them out of cannons. It's definitely, the community are making use of a lot of features already to create their own weapons. Yeah, exactly. This is really great. And uh, last question from Amadei HP. Uh, so he's asking, can we still expect some new features and blocks? coming in the future. And then another question, what happened to all those planned features that they teased? Uh, why have they decided to move to this finishing phase? Not enough players, not enough profit, or they just getting bored of it? So it's many questions, but of course the, the, the team is the same. And so I think it's quite clear that we are not bored of space engineers and we're actually just getting started. Not enough profit is also not the reason because there is good profit and uh, there will also be in the future. So that's also not an issue. Not enough players. I think it's good. Like there are 200,000 players playing the game every month. And we hope that with the more solid gameplay, there will be more people coming, coming in. And then of course, long-term vision, adding more interesting features, even like more game play related game design, uh, more objectives will bring new people because I think the core that is in space engineers, this dynamic physics is very easy to expand on. And uh, the reason why we moved to this finishing phase is that we think is the most important thing right now to get the game to the, to the solid stage. So that's the answer.
I totally agree with you, but I think as soon as we pass through this stage a minute, it's going to open the door for a lot more players to actually get involved with the game. We've already got the really good looking graphics and now having the stable gameplay, the two updates almost go hand in hand, really. Yeah, exactly. They actually are going hand in hand. (laughs) Excellent. I think that kind of wraps us up here for everything, unless there's any final points you'd like to end on. Uh, I think we covered it all. So thank you very much, Jack, for, for the opportunity to discuss these topics with you. And there we have it, guys. That marks the end of my interview with Mark Rosa. It was great to talk to him about the development of Space Engineers and get him to answer some of the burning community questions we've all had since the recent Q&A. If you still have questions you'd like to get answered in a follow-up Q&A and discussion, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I also encourage you to go over and read Mark Rosa's new blog post of this interview, as well as any other important questions he feels that he uh, should answer in more uh, depth as well. I do hope you enjoyed this interview and any comments you can leave down below is greatly appreciated because we sure are going to do a follow up. I'm just excited about the features coming to Space Engineers as well as how the game is going and it's nice now we've got clearer context for where the game is actually going. I look forward to discussing this with you. If you do want to discuss it with any greater detail, feel free to comment down below or even tweet me at CaptainJackYT. Modders, we've left an email address down below for yourself to contact. Uh, you can contact there to get your mods um, working properly with the game and work with Mark and his team to integrate properly, as you heard him say in the interview. All reference material is available down below in the description of this video. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you did enjoy, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.